The following program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. Hear this loud and clear. In fact, modern day liberal theologians hear this loud and clear. Those of you who are embracing replacement theology, let me say this to that heresy. If God does not fulfill every promise he has made to the nation of Israel, then we Christians have no promises at all. Countdown, all eyes on God is today's message from Jack Hibbs. War, disease, natural disasters, unprecedented events are escalating like never before. Are they signs of the end times? In his brand new book, Countdown, All Eyes on God's Ultimate Endgame, Jack Hibbs examines the current world indicators that point to last day's prophecy. Find out how today's headlines about America, Israel, Russia, and escalated global conflict fulfill ancient prophecies about Christ's return. In this powerful and informative new book, What's next on the prophetic calendar? Which major players should we keep our eyes on? What further calamities will God allow? And how should we live in light of these things? Get answers with Countdown, all eyes on God's ultimate endgame. Our gift to you when you give to the ministry of real life with Jack Hibbs. Get your copy at jackhibbs.com or by calling 877-777-2346. Order now. As we look around the world today, we see things that according to the human perspective, if you're watching the media, if you're getting any news notifications on your device, you would think that the world is coming apart at the seams. And I understand that it feels that way, but you need to understand something. The Bible tells us that God has given us the hope of his word and that he's got a plan. And that plan is in action. So as you and I look around this world, we are seeing things form. We are seeing the stage being set for God's intervention in this world. And according to the Bible, everything that you and I see right now, you can open the chapter verse of scripture and understand that we are very much heading in that direction. So friend, I tell you this, grab your Bible and get ready to dive in with us because we're gonna be looking at a message all eyes on God. Why? Because God is moving in the earth. We've got wars. We've got rumors of wars. We've got uh, ethnicities warring against each other. Jesus said, when you begin to see these things happen, these things, look up because your redemption draws near. So this is a very critical time, but listen, it's not falling apart, friends. I know it feels like it. It's falling together. So let's get into it right now, if you would. Jesus said regarding all things, remember in John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. So when you're hearing this message, you should get excited. So I don't know if you get excited. Look, with what's coming, you can either get run over by it, or you can understand that God has spoken to you about these things, and you can get excited about it. Because by the way, it's a big difference. It's a big difference on how you understand or how you view Bible prophecy with this beautiful caveat built into it. It's a verse I think I've been using almost every week during this series. Luke 21, 36, Jesus says to us, Be always on the watch. Pray that you may escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. That is, that is coming, His appearing. 
So church, listen, I'm going to ask you to write these down. I'm going to give you a string of verses, and we're going to get into our points. Are you ready? I need to know. Can you say, say repeat after me. I am ready. Number one, Titus 2.13. This is all preparatory, Titus 2.13. Looking for the blessed hope. Every believer within the hearing of my voice, you are to be looking, scanning, observing the horizon for what? The blessed hope. Let's see what it is. And the glorious appearing. I'll argue with you today that it is not the coming of Christ, but the appearing of Christ. Big difference. The appearing of our great God and Savior. It's one and the same. He's one and the same, I should say. Who is it? Jesus Christ. This verse keeps cult members up late at night because it screams about the fact that the Christian is to be watching constantly for his coming, which means there's no warning per se exactly. And then secondly, that he is the great God and Savior because the Bible teaches there is no second or third. No wonder why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. Why? Because he is our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the great, great verse that you ought to have over you. Number two, listen to this. This is very, very much fun. I'm going to give you five references each one from the five chapters of the book of Thessalonians. When Paul preached in Thessalonica, by the way, on one of those maps, I, I could have showed you where that is. Here's the thing, though. When Paul came preaching the gospel, he came into the region of Thessalonica, and scholars all agree that he was there somewhere between three to four weeks. That's it. He preached. There were no Christians. He preached Pagans began to accept Christ, he set up a church, and he moved on. And three to four weeks later, or some time later, he writes them a letter, I should say. I think it was actually close to about a year. He writes a letter back to them because he heard that they were panicking, that they had somehow missed the last day's events. Notice this with me, and I'm going to make it pretty, what's the word, demonstrative. I will really let you know. Notice this, mark it down, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. Wait for his son from heaven, you are to be waiting, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. You see the word wrath? You ought to circle that, and you ought to say, this is not talking about hell. This word has nothing to do with hell. This word has everything to do with God's wrath that's going to be poured out upon the earth for a Christ-rejecting age or world. You need to know that. It changes everything if you understand that. They were panicking and they were afraid and they thought they missed his appearing and that they were going to be going through the wrath and the judgment of God. And Paul tells them, nope. Or in Hebrew, it's lo, lo. I like that, lo. Yes is ken. Ken, low, no. <laughs> Paul, didn't we miss it? Low. <laughs> no, you didn't miss it. Keep looking, keep watching. First Thessalonians two nineteen, chapter two, verse nineteen. For what is our hope? Says Paul, or joy, or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming, or at His appearing? Chapter 3, verse 13. He says, So that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. How many of you know someone who died believing in Jesus? Raise your hand. They died believing in Jesus. They're coming back with him. That's the reference with all his saints. That's why you'll see in a moment, watch how this builds. It's going to explain what that means. What do you mean he's coming with all his saints? I thought you'd ask. Chapter 4, verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant or uninformed, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring, hello, with him those who sleep or died in Jesus. By the way, please remember, sleep is referring to their bodies, not their souls. There is no such thing in the Bible as soul sleep. 
That's a cultic view, and it's unbiblical. Verse 15, for this we say by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Watch what happens, and this will prove the argument. What appears to be asleep? He's going to tell us. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and here you go, the dead in Christ will rise first. Their bodies will pop up out of the grave. Pop up. Have you ever seen a, have you ever, have you ever bought a, I mean, you don't buy these things very often, but when you do, it's kind of cool. When you buy a new toaster, <laughs> when do you buy a new toaster, but like twice in a lifetime? One of the great attributes about a toaster is that when you put the toast in and you toast it for the first time, you better be ready. When that thing's done, that toast comes flying out of there. You can even grab it. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, that toast comes shooting out of that toaster. According to the Bible, listen, God is going to shout the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, and boom, like a toaster. Forest lawn, think about it, rose hills. Wow, look at that. There's going to be all these Pop-Tarts coming up. Amazing. The Bible tells us, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, the word rapture, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. That should be a great comfort. Listen, let's be honest. If you're a Christian, but you're, you're sleeping with bubbles or rocky, and God has been saying to you, you ought not to be doing this, or you're getting, you know, dabbling back into the old world of drugs, but now you believe in Christ, and Jesus is saying, come on, get out of that. We don't do that anymore. Or you're snooping around and looking in places you ought not to be looking, and the Holy Spirit says, you belong to me now. Stop it. You know what? Listen, What's, what ought to be very comforting is when we say, Jesus could come back today. You always see the Christian who's not walking right with God. They go like this when you say, oh, man, I hope the Lord comes back today. And they go, yeah, okay, right on. <laughs> really? They're a little nervous about it. Hey, man, the Lord can come back today. The only time I see hesitation with that is at a wedding. Before I walk out here with the, with the groom-to-be, I said, man. Then it'd be great the Lord came back. Why are we halfway down the aisle? The Lord comes back. And he goes, oh, no. How about one more day? <laughs> it's great. It's always, it's always fantastic. But the person that is, the Christian not walking with God doesn't like to hear about this. But it's exactly what you need to hear. He could come back at any time. He wants you to love that hope also. And look, if you're not a Christian, you should just panic right now, right where you're at. I mean, we've got defibrillators and nurses and doctors all over this place. You ought to have a heart attack. You ought to just have a heart attack right now. Because if you knew that you're one breath away from eternity called hell, you'd shut me up, you'd get up here, you'd get on your knee, you'd say, get out of my way, stop talking, Pastor. I need to get saved now before something happens. Think about that. It's exactly... And then 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. Five chapters five exhortations about his imminent coming. For God did not appoint us to wrath, that is the wrath of Almighty God, his vengeance that's coming upon the earth, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's great news. And so in our current global situation, church, we see an awakening taking place. An awakening. I don't mean just spiritually. In all kinds of ways. This is how we know we're living in amazing days. When I say awakening, bear with me when I say Iran, Persia is awakening. China is awakening. North Korea at this hour is awakening. Russia is awakening. For the last four years, these players have been contained by large degree. You need to know that. So number one, we look at this. In light of all that's going on, and we're seeing saber rattling, we're seeing an awakening all of a sudden of nations. Listen, right now as I speak to you, what is today's date? 24th. The 24th. Mark your calendar. Look at Jane's Defense Weekly. Go to those websites. Go to some of these websites uh, 
Go to the website Proceedings by the U.S. Navy. Go to some of these websites and read some of the things that are going on. And you look around at the world, and all of a sudden, in the last seven days, there's been a bizarre global shift in the players I just mentioned to you a moment ago. They were all back like a lion tamer puts a lion back in its corner. They were like this. They weren't happy. They weren't going, oh, goody, look at America's economy. It's fantastic. Oh, look at all the people going to church. Isn't that great? They didn't do that. They were like this. And they were held in place. And then all of a sudden, things have been shaken. I'm talking about the hand of God. I'm not talking politics here. There's a reason for this. Number one, I want you to mark this down. What we know for sure is all eyes are on God. So that's a huge statement. All eyes are not on God. This is what I mean by this. People are awakening and they're asking questions about God and the end of the world and what's up next. There are atheists asking the question. People are jarred. In a recent poll, some 70% of Americans thought that we'd be at war within a year with Iran, Persia. Not because we want to, but because of what they're doing. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 21 says, Who has declared this from ancient time, and who has told it from that time? Have I not I the Lord, that there is no other God beside me, a just God and a Savior? There is none besides me. Notice what he's saying. This is the result of that reality, that truth. Verse 22. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. In the midst of all the shaking that is now beginning to formulate and the posturing, it's God's will right now that the world wake up to these things and understand God's in control. He knows exactly what's going on. It's been said that recent events both in our nation and the world have revealed to us that we are all living in unprecedented time, that these times just might be with us for a while. Nobody wants to hear that. But they're starting to make comments. They're starting to say things. And I've got news articles that I may or may not get to this week, but certainly by next week. People are beginning to question everything, and so we should. People are unsettled. People are looking for answers. And that's what I mean by all eyes are upon God. The book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 says... Haggai 2.6, this is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea, and the dry land. Listen, he's not, he's not poetically speaking here. This is not God writing a, a play. He means it. I will shake all nations. And what is desired by all nations will come. That's the hope of the gospel. I will fill this house, speaking of his temple with glory, says the Lord Almighty. God knows what's going on in the nation's church. He knows what's going on. And there's a healthy and a much needed, I'm going to get mail for this. <laughs> there's a healthy and much needed division taking place in what is called church. It needs to happen. People groups, religions, this is necessary. It's increasing every week. We need to remember something that in Hebrews 12, 28, Hebrews 12, 28, the Bible says, therefore, since we've received a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Isn't that great? Uh, let me interrupt myself right here, right now. The world is shaking. Some people are shaking. God says, wait, wait, come to me. Let me hold you. Let me hold you. You, you, don't, you don't need to shake your mind. Don't sh stop shaking. Our little dog, she never shakes, but for some reason last night, you know how little dogs usually shake? She doesn't. Well, she was shaking. It's too cold for her. So you know what? The moment we picked her up and held her, about a, it had to be you know, a minute that she stopped shaking. She looked scared, but she was cold. There are people that are shaking today. They're Christians. They love the Lord. But doubt and fear has gotten into them, and they're shaking. And God is saying, come here, come here, come here, come here. It's funny because he's saying, come here. <laughs> and so you need to let him pick you up. And he says, listen, I'm going to 
take care of you because my kingdom will never shake. But he goes on in the passage, that verse in Hebrews, he goes on and he says this. Therefore, since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Oh my goodness, godly fear is an awesome thing. Godly fear is godly awe. It means awe. Beautiful. For our God is a consuming fire. It's the will of God that you come to the saving, loving, and forgiving knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is the will of God. All eyes on God. People are beginning to look, and so they should. Very important. I think we have a slide under this point. Is it number four, you guys? Is that what we're looking at? New York Times, May 15th. 1948, all eyes on God. People say, well, I don't know about all eyes on God. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. We've mentioned this before. We need to mention it again. Headlines, Saturday, May 15th, because Saturday, May 15th follows Friday, May 14th. <laughs> May 14th was the day that Bible prophecy was fulfilled. And the New York Times says, Zionists proclaim new state of Israel. Truman recognizes it, right? recognizes it and hopes for peace. Tel Aviv is bombed. Egypt orders an invasion. <laughs> Did you know that Israel was attacked one day after they were born? They had no army. But they won. How does that happen? God has done this. Absolutely amazing. You say, how does that play into anything? It plays into everything. Hear this loud and clear. In fact, modern day liberal theologians hear this loud and clear. Those of you who are embracing replacement theology, let me say this to that heresy. If God does not fulfill every promise he has made to the nation of Israel, then we Christians have no promises at all. He said his covenant with Israel was everlasting. He said, I will bring you back from the ends of the earth and place you in your own land once I begin to move. You saw the headline, evidence of a fact. People look at it, well, that's a nice headline. Are you kidding me? That's Bible prophecy fulfilled. We'll study it later, Isaiah 66, but that's a fact. Amen. You know what's awesome about that headline news? You can look at the New York Times on Saturday, May 15th, 1948, and say, isn't God good? And mm, my Bible's true. Because if God doesn't keep his promises to Israel, you ain't got nothing. How in the world would you expect to go to heaven? Well, Jesus promised me. You don't have any promises. Because if the Father can't keep them to Israel, then what responsibility does Jesus have to keep his promises to you? Thank God he keeps his promises to Israel, and he shall keep them. Remember, we've been grafted in to what the Bible says is the commonwealth of Israel. We're going to go to heaven because the gospel came to Israel first. We need to remember that. Well, listen, more than ever now, we need to get into the Bible. We need to have our Bibles, frankly, marked up, underlined, maybe some personal notes written in there that... God has spoken to you, but I want to encourage you that it's a time to focus on the Lord. It's a time to get ready. It's a time to get excited. I, I mean that sincerely because my friend, this world is not our home. This world has an expiration date on it, but our God is the God of eternity. And you must remember this, Jesus Christ and throughout the Bible, God announces to us that he has not given us a spirit of fear. We do not need to be intimidated by fear mongers, by those who are terrorized themselves. If their lives are falling apart, that doesn't mean that your life needs to fall apart. No, my friend, this is a time to be strong in the Word of God. This book is the foundation fit for eternity. We need to get ready, because that's where we're gonna be living with Jesus if you and I know him personally. Listen, more resources, more teaching, and if you think these messages are blessing you and you wanna join the team by helping us, you can do that at jackhibbs.com 
where you can advance the Word of God with us, jackhibbs.com. God bless you until next time. Biblical prophecy is coming to life before our very eyes. Current events are lining up with signs of the end times that Jesus spoke about in the Bible. This should affect the way we think, act, and live every day. Countdown is a great title for this booklet. Jack Hibbs has opened my eyes to the fact that what I'm reading in the news is not random or coincidental. The global pandemic, race riots, international wars, it would seem like this world is falling apart, but Countdown showed me that in reality, it's all falling into place. The author of the book exhorts us to remain steadfast and watchful and to be ready because the time is short. And that gives me great hope that God is in complete control. Countdown, all eyes on God's ultimate end game is our gift to you when you give to the ministry of real life with Jack Gibbs. Get your copy now at jackgibbs.com or by calling 877-777-2346. Don't wait, order now. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there, you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life.